Throughout the long and fascinating evolutionary history of sharks, some very weird species have appeared in the fossil record. Sharks are an incredibly diverse group of organisms even today, and in the past all sorts of wonderfully unusual forms diversified and filled a range of niches, leading to the remarkable success of this superorder. In this video we're going to look at three particularly weird examples of this past diversity, and I've attempted to avoid the error that so many other lists of these animals tend to make, including ourselves in the past, of featuring species that actually aren't technically sharks, but instead holocephalids or other kinds of cartilaginous fish, as we explained in the first episode of Shark Week. I've also tried to include some much lesser known species of strange prehistoric sharks to make this more interesting, featuring animals that not only possess weird bits of anatomy, but also have evidence of strange behaviours. So here we have three of the weirdest extinct sharks. First we have a shark called Scapanorhynchus. This genus is known from fossil remains dating back to the early Cretaceous, and it includes several different species that collectively survived over a pretty long time. The meaning of this organism's name translates to spade snout, and you can quite clearly understand why. Scapanorhynchus is one of the fortunate taxa of sharks that are actually known from good fossils, with the species Scapanorhynchus lewisii providing paleontologists with the remains of its body, and not just teeth. The specimens of this animal were discovered in early Cretaceous Age rocks located in Lebanon, and as a result of the remarkably well-preserved remains, we can tell a lot about the anatomy and therefore the relationships of this shark. Scapanorhynchus would have been a really weird looking animal when it was alive, but it actually shares some of these weird features with a species of shark that still exists today, the goblin shark. Both these sharks possess the elongated blade-like snout, as well as a similar looking tail with lower lobes that are very much alike. Additionally, the teeth are comparable, displaying similar striations, and having an overall anatomy that makes them perfect for catching fish. However, one major difference is that Scapanorhynchus was generally much smaller than the modern day goblin shark, which can actually grow to lengths of about 3.4 meters, with the fossils only measuring around 65 centimeters. But there is one species of this prehistoric shark, Scapanorhynchus texanus, which inhabited shallower waters than the other species and is known from teeth that suggest it may have been capable of achieving sizes close to the goblin shark, although it's also worth noting that this particular species placement within the genus has been brought into question before. So, since the Scapanorhynchus species were very similar to the goblin shark, they have been classified as the potential ancestors of the modern animal. The similarities are actually so striking that some researchers have even suggested the goblin shark should be put into the Scapanorhynchus genus, but certain other differences have led to the conclusion that they should in fact be in separate genera. When Scapanorhynchus was alive, it probably would have behaved in a very similar way to the goblin shark, since their anatomies are so alike, possibly living at very deep depths in the ocean and lurking slowly in the darkness as they hunted for prey. Like the goblin shark, the elongated snout was probably capable of detecting subtle electrical fields produced by animals nearby, making them very effective at locating food in the dark. An absolutely fascinating part of shark evolutionary history, Scapanorhynchus was certainly a very weird animal. Next up, we have a very recently named genus and species of prehistoric shark, Galagodon nordquistae. Named and described in January of 2019, this animal comes from late Cretaceous rocks in South Dakota. In fact, it comes from the very same rocks that the famous Tyrannosaur specimen Sue was uncovered from. All that's actually known of this shark species are its tiny teeth, which were discovered when a volunteer at the Chicago Field Museum identified them while looking through the matrix that had once entombed Sue's bones. These teeth are seriously small, only about the size of a pinhead, but it's their weird shapes that resulted in the paleontologists who described the animal they once belonged to giving this organism the name they did. The unusually shaped structures apparently reminded the scientists of the spaceships from the video game Galaga, and therefore they called it Galagodon, meaning Galaga tooth. The teeth are certainly quite strangely shaped, but they were perfectly adapted to feeding on these sharks' likely diet of small invertebrates. Galagodon was found to be a member of the shark order Erectolobiforms, also known as the carpet sharks. Despite this group actually including the largest fish species alive today, the whale shark, Galagodon was a pretty small species, at less than 60 centimeters long. Although only the teeth of this animal are known to us, as is so often the case with shark fossils, comparisons with teeth from other species indicate that Galagodon potentially resembled members of the bamboo shark group within the carpet sharks. The presence of sharks in the rocks in which Sue was found reveals that this river deposit must actually have been connected to the sea. 
After moving into these waterways from a more marine setting, Galagodon likely spent a lot of his time lying near the bed of the rivers and wetlands that stretched across this prehistoric landscape, and the discovery of these bizarre looking teeth which belonged to an unusual species of freshwater shark was a fascinating addition to our knowledge of the world and its ecosystems at this time. Finally, we have Orthocanthus. This genus is a member of the Xenocanths, a grouping of odd-looking sharks that lived from the Carboniferous to the Triassic, and this particular taxon preserves evidence of some incredibly fascinating and perhaps slightly unpleasant habits. Orthocanthus, and indeed most Xenocanths, looked very bizarre. This fish had a body that resembles that of an eel, with an elongated dorsal fin that ran along the length of its back. It also possessed a dorsal spine, and had really unusual teeth with three points, known as tricuspid teeth. Orthocanthus was a pretty big fish too, achieving lengths of about 3 meters. These sharks lived at an interesting time and place, about 300 million years ago in coastal swamps surrounding the massive jungles that would eventually produce coal forests. Orthocanthus was very likely preying on amphibians and other fish that also inhabited the coastal swamps and shallow seas, meaning this shark was capable of moving between marine and freshwater environments similar to the modern bull shark. But interestingly, it was not only other species that Orthocanthus was feeding on. In 2016, a paper was published that presented evidence of cannibalism in this shark, but not just cannibalism, filial cannibalism. These animals were eating their own babies. Within the preserved excrement of Orthocanthus, fossils known as coprolites, small teeth of juvenile Orthocanthus sharks were found, meaning that the larger adults had turned on their babies for some reason. It's suggested by the paleontologists who discovered this that perhaps the sharks used the inland waterways of the swamps as nurseries where they could protect their young, but then when other food sources became unavailable, they began to feed on their own offspring. So, Orthocanthus is another weird-looking prehistoric shark that appears to have employed an unusual behavioural tactic to help them survive. I hope you enjoyed this slightly more obscure list of weird extinct sharks. Let me know in the comments which of these animals was your favourite, and make sure to watch the next episode of Shark Week 2019 in which Doug reviews the last seven days of shark science. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.